Welcome to the Brunswick Beat. Brunswick County's only television news show brought to you by the Brunswick Beacon. I'm Rachel Johnson. And I'm Stacy Manning. On Monday night, Brunswick County Commissioner's Chairman Bill Sue was given North Carolina's highest civilian honor. He was inducted into the Order of the Longleaf Pine. State Representative Frank Eiler read a resolution from Governor Bev Perdue honoring Bill Sue. Uh, imposing special confidence and integrity, learning and zeal of William M. Bill Sue, the body's pre presence confer the Order of Long Leaf Pine. He goes on. Congratulations, Chairman Sue. Thank you, Frank. From Governor Perdue. Thank you. Sue, who said he was surprised, thanked a standing room only crowd of family, friends, elected officials, and others. But in, in apparently a lot of folks knew what was going on in Saturday. It kind of disturbed me because you and I keep up what's going on. <laughs> but thank all of you for being in attendance, and I know it wasn't just for me. But thank you very much. I'm touched. It's almost back to school time for Brunswick County students. This year, with staggered start times set to debut and new bus pickup times, school officials encourage parents and students to attend their school's open houses. The first day of school for Brunswick County Public Schools is Thursday, August 25th. Open houses at elementary schools will be noon to 7 p.m. Monday, August 22nd. Middle school and high school open houses will be from 4 to 7 p.m. Tuesday, August 23rd. New school start times are as follows. Elementary schools, 7.45 a.m. until 2.50 p.m. Middle schools, 8.50 a.m. to 3.55 p.m. High schools, 8.55 a.m. to 3.50 p.m. For more information on school start times and bus pickup times, visit bcswan.net. Jenny's Branch exists no more, at least in signage. As of August 9th, signs at the bridge on North Carolina 179 have been replaced with ones marking it as Saucepan Creek. Katie Height, traffic engineer for the North Carolina Department of Transportation, said her department was notified by the county that the official naming of that water feature there had been revised. Height clarified the NCDOT had nothing to do with records being changed, it only changed the signs. It took more than a year to get the name change implemented and approved at both state and federal level. The Brunswick County Animal Shelter will continue to suspend its Saturday operating hours despite the offer of a non-profit animal rescue group to provide volunteers. Members of Rescue Animals Community Effort, also known as RACE, submitted a written proposal last month to David Stanley, director of the Brunswick County Health Department, for volunteers to staff the shelter for four hours on Saturdays. Stanley, however, said there are still ongoing concerns about security and liability issues at the shelter. Officials with the North Carolina Human Relations Commission have found no evidence Brunswick County engaged in discriminatory practices regarding residents of the Shingle Tree Acres community near Carolina Shores. The commission was, has dismissed the matter. The allegations were brought by Ronnie McRae, a property owner in Shingle Tree Acres, who alleged the county refused to provide municipal services and public amenities to Shingle Tree Acres, a predominantly black community. Water service in the area is now available for property owners who wish to hook onto the system. Brunswick County Commissioners on Monday agreed to shell out more than $112,000 to fund their portion of the nearly half a million dollar Lockwood Folly Inlet dredging project. The county's share was contingent on Oak Island and Holden Beach, each agreeing to appropriate more than $56,000 for their share. Oak Island Mayor Betty Wallace and Holden Beach Town Manager David Hewitt said their councils have agreed to the funds. Residents continue to have concerns about the safety of the intersection at the entrance to the new Sunset Beach high-rise bridge. There have been several wrecks there since the bridge opened last November. Some residents, including one who was involved in a recent wreck there, have said a traffic light needs to be installed. But the North Carolina Department of Transportation says it's not needed. The Schlitt Police Department is seeking your help tonight. On Friday, August 12th at approximately 11.30 p.m., the Pizza Hut on Main Street was robbed. Two male suspects entered the restaurant through the back door, held the manager at gunpoint, and demanded money. The suspects then fled through the back door. Anyone with information is asked to call 754-5590. Detectives with the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office are also searching for a suspect who was involved in an assault last weekend in Supply. 56-year-old Perry Randolph Bryan of Percy Place Circle in Supply is wanted for one count of assault with a deadly weapon inflicting serious injury. Sheriff's deputies responded to Bryant's home 
around 9 p.m. Saturday, August 12th, where they found the victim, 38-year-old Courtney Conroy Brissett, who suffered three knife lacerations. Bryant was also injured in the altercation. Read all of these stories and much more in this week's Beacon, available on newsstands now. Hi, I'm Stacy Manning, Managing Editor of the Brunswick Beacon. Did you get engaged recently or married? Have you celebrated a milestone anniversary or did you have a baby? How about letting us share the news with our readers? You can email your social news to me at editor at brunswickbeacon.com or you can log on to our website at www.brunswickbeacon.com. Look for the Submit News icon near the top right-hand corner of the page. Deadlines are noon each Friday. Welcome to the Sports Report. After years of thought, Mike Alderson and son Brian Alderson have opened the Brunswick Batting Center on Red Bug Road just off US 17. Alderson said there are no in-county facilities like this center and parents were driving their children an estimated 60 miles round trip to other facilities for lessons and practice. The Brunswick Batting Center opened last week. The Diamond Stars travel teams also will make use of the facility, Alderson said. Private lessons cover pitching, hitting, and fielding. Memberships are also available for the public. For more information, call 754-9333. The West Brunswick High School football team beat Ashley 13-0 in one of the five scrimmages in the 25th annual BB&T Football Jamboree on Friday night at Legion Stadium. The two teams played two 12-minute periods, and West defense shut out the Screaming Eagles on their six possessions. The main defenders on the line were juniors Hunter Howard and Markel Stanley and seniors Billy Bopas and Darius Williams. On offense, the Trojans scored on their second possession on a 69-yard run by junior Jamar Bethea. West scored on its fourth possession an eight-yard rollout by quarterback Taylor Bufkin. The BB&T Jamboree is used as the final game situation practice run for the football teams that competed Friday night. Some teams needed more practice than others. South Brunswick had some good surprises and some things that definitely needed to be worked on in a 10-7 loss to Hoggard. South ran 19 plays in its scrimmage, which is divided into two continuously running 12-minute halves with one timeout in each half. South had one penalty and one fumble. Unfortunately, that fumble cost them the game on the last two plays. South trailed 7-0 in the second half when Greg Burton-White gained yardage on an inside run. Gary Williams then ran off to the right end for a touchdown. Kicker Corey Bryant's extra point tied the score 7-7. A south fumble on the 12, 12 with the time running out was a gift to Hoggard, who two plays later kicked a 12-yard field goal for the winning points. Find weekly sports updates and many great sports photos in the sports section of your weekly beacon. Stacey Manning, Managing Editor of the Brunswick Beacon. Do you have a community event you'd like to tell our community about? You can email it to me at editor at brunswickbeacon.com or you can log on to our website at www.brunswickbeacon.com. Look for the Submit News icon near the top right hand corner of the page. Deadlines are noon each Friday. Lewis, I'm here at Cattails today with Trish Kelly, the manager. And Trish, who are we visiting with today? Well, we have three brothers. The third one has decided he'd rather eat. But this is Dud uh, Dudley, and this is Diego, and Dylan is chowing down on the other side of the room. <laughs> and this is Dylan? This is Juicy Fruit coming oh, okay. to see us. Um, we're having a special sale in August. It's a high five sale. $5 adoption fees, and all of our adults will only be $5. They will have had all of the normal vet stuff. They're up to date on their shops. They're spayed and neutered. Everything's been done, but we're trying to get people to look at the adults. Everybody comes in at this time of year and plays with the kittens. 
and this will give your adults a good shot. They are um, friendly and sweet. These three brothers are two years old, all boys, all orange and white. One of them has a lot of white, one of them has a medium amount of white, and this one has the least white. But they're sweet cats, they're friendly, and they're looking for a home, not necessarily together, they're just looking for a good home. Well, this sounds like a really good deal for people to come out and visit with your beautiful cats and get a good adoption rate at the same time and find a good forever home for these cats. It is, and normally our adults are $60. Juicy Group coming to see you again. Normally our adults are $60. Um, this way we'll give people a break. Maybe they can put it towards whatever they have in the next vet feed or towards food. Absolutely. Um, but it's a good opportunity to get a wonderful cat, sweet cat, at a reduced price. Sure is. You can come by and see us on Beach Drive in Ocean Isle Beach. We're open on Wednesdays from 11 to 1 and on Saturdays and Sundays from 11 until 3. Or you can check out all of our cats on our website at cattails.org. Okay, Trish, this sounds really good. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for coming by. West Brunswick High School graduate Briley Tidwell was honored Monday night by county commissioners for achieving the rank of Eagle Scout. Reading from the resolution honoring Tidwell, here's what Commissioner Phil Norris had to say about his accomplishments. Whereas it is a mark of distinction when Boy Scouts of America confers upon a scout the rank of Eagle Scout, only after that scout has demonstrated to his peers <coughs> and to his troop leaders that he has the capability for greatness and the ability to retain knowledge and skill as the organization has instructed. Hey y'all, mark your calendar. Southern celebrity chef Paula Dean is coming to town in the very near future. Dean will take part in a fundraiser for student scholarships on Saturday, October 15th at Brunswick Community College. The Food Network personality and author will attend a VIP light luncheon at noon, followed by a VIP meet and greet and eat with fans from 1 to 2 p.m. in Odell Williamson Auditorium. For more information and to buy tickets for the event, go to pauladean.brunswickcc or visit BCC's Facebook page. Think you've got what it takes to perform on stage? Auditions for the Habitat Follies are set for 9 a.m. Saturday at Brunswick Community College. Solos, duos, singers, and dancers 21 years old and older are welcome to audition for the November 6th show, which benefits Habitat for Humanity. For more information, call 454-0007. That's all the time we have for tonight, but you can read about all these stories and much more in this week's Beacon. If you know of a story or a person you'd like to see on Brunswick Beat, Email us at brunswickbeat at brunswickbeacon.com, look us up on Facebook at Brunswick Beacon, or follow us on Twitter at Brunswick Beacon. As we close out the show tonight, we'll take another look at those new school start times. That's right, Stacy. It's going to be a big change for students and parents this year. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to tune in next week for a brand new edition of Brunswick Beat, Brunswick County's only television news show brought to you by the Brunswick Beacon. Tonight's Beacon shines on a group of local residents who recently dined on Southern food at Planet Fun while wearing their best 1960s attire for the debut of the hit movie, The Help. Here's a closer look at all the fun.